moment. So my work environment is, let's call it 50% in the field and 50% in the office. But really, it, during the field season, I'm out 100% of the time. And then when I'm not in the field season, I'm in the office 100% of the time writing about what I did in the field. When I'm in the field, I'm in the river, on the water, trudging through some swampy marsh to get to where I need to be, or perhaps that's where I need to be. In the office, I recently got this stand-up desk, which is really nice, and I got this button that actually helps me adjust it perfectly. <laughs> and my office is actually at the location where we divert water out of the river. So it's pretty close to the dam and where we also treat the water. So I'm surrounded by water utility mechanics and people that operate the facility, as well as my team, which is full of natural resource specialists like me. I genuinely love being able to provide this service, right? It's not just protecting the fish or storing the fish, even though that's a huge part of it and the reason why I love it, but I'm providing water that people go on to drink and to bathe their kids in. Yeah, I had a few internships in college. One of them was with the United States Fish and Wildlife Service working at a fish hatchery. And it's not like a fish hatchery that we have out here in Washington. It's a open air, open pond fish hatchery that freezes every year because it's in cold Wisconsin requiring me to don a pair of waders and scramble in there and freeze my tush off. Yet I still enjoyed it throughout. And another position was with the United States Geological Survey doing a lot of the data analytics that also interested me. So after I graduated college, I was debating whether or not I could continue my education or if I would go to work right away. It was a different time because it was right during the you know, recession of 2008, 2012. So education seemed like a better path because there weren't a lot of jobs out there, which translated into me not finding an actual permanent job for half a decade. But all of those small steps that I took along the way all of the seasonal jobs that only lasted six months, all built on each other and helped develop me into the person that I am today. It was, in effect, my continuing education by getting these seasonal six-month positions, and I learned something, which is how I got here today. While higher education is extremely important, and I advise everybody to do it because I learned so much from it, it's not the end-all, be-all, and you can learn a lot by just being out there and seeing it, witnessing it. But you also have to read and you have to learn. You have to dedicate yourself to it. Steve Irwin and Shark Week were definitely an inspiration for why I became a fish biologist. I wanted to do exactly what I saw on television. So it started there and having a general passion for the outdoors. I grew up in rural western Wisconsin along the Mississippi River, went to college, graduated from Wisconsin, came to Washington and jumped around from job to job to job before I found this one and I haven't moved since and I don't have an intention to. Swimming's a good one. Hopefully, whoever you work for is going to help you develop those skills along the way. I think the necessary skills are pretty fundamental to the person themselves. A good communicator, passionate, can get you anywhere and everywhere you need to go. All the smaller skills along the way, you'll learn as long as you want to learn. As far as experience, you better actually go out with the fish biologist and experience their life, their work life in the field. Had I not been in an internship where I actually put on waders and gone into a freezing pond, I may have not been aware of how cold and miserable that this job can be at times. But that's exactly what I was looking for and something that I was aware of prior to jumping in. 
my advice for gaining experience is literally jump in the water and experience before you dedicate your life to it.